lost episode nice. is a style of animation in an episode which is either witnessed by the production crew of the show. Look at that! Or an you saw look at that! Look at that! You like saw Tom, bro. <laughs> that, like, that used to creep me out, bro. They used to episode, like make their own visuals. The... They made their own visuals <laughs> and like did this and like made that made it even creepier. On the look at that. No, there was this one. There was this one scene that they they put on screen, and they had uh, they had Jerry smiling. That one creeped me out. Uh, I ain't they gonna lie. I, always want, I ain't gonna lie. I always wanted him to catch Jerry, bro. I hated Jerry. Yeah, I, I hate Jerry, too, bro. bro. I'm like, is he ever gonna catch that he, little motherfucker? <laughs> sometimes he be messing. He be messing with him like out of nowhere, bro. Like out he be just nowhere, messing bro. with him sometimes. I'm like, bro, like let him chill, bro. Damn. <laughs> Right, my nigga be chilling. Here come this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> my nigga, now my nigga got to fight a dog and shit. He didn't made the dog right, mad bro. and shit. Actually, Jerry didn't getting... make the dog mad, but since he's so little, he turn around and see Tom. Oh, I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> Y'all remember that big black woman that would, that would beat up Tom sometimes? Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think she was yeah. his own. I think that was his owner. Yeah. She would just come in there and just start hitting his ass. Like, damn, right. man. Whoever liked her, bro. I'm like, bro, this is cat abuse, bro. Like, come on now. <laughs> I used to hate that shit, bro. <laughs> Tom and Jerry, lost episode. It opens up with Tom and the owner in a typical house. But Tom's owner seemed even angrier than other Tom and Jerry episodes. The first scene shown in the episode shows the owner stomping on Tom's tail in a very realistic and painful way because Tom was sleeping by the basement door. They're all screenshots, the starts bro. yelling at Tom to never go down there. <laughs> Tom, clearly terrified, runs away to another room. Jerry then comes out of a mouse hole and follows Tom into the next room. The next few minutes then show the regular Tom and Jerry routine where Jerry tricks Tom into chasing him into the basement door a few times. But each time the owner catches Tom and flicks realistically painful injuries, which stays with Tom even after the scene ends. After this, Tom starts to cry and moves to Jerry not to bother him anymore. He ain't crying in that scene. <laughs> He's selling it, bro. It's just like, bro. <laughs> bro, I really believed all of these, bro. I really right, believed Right, going that, back, it's that. like, bro, this shit was stupid as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> why he, why, and why he got to add realistically painful. <laughs> nigga, how was you, how was you, what you talking about realistically? Nigga, it's a cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cartoon, right? It was realistically <laughs> painful. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, bro? <laughs> What was, this alive, what was this a live fucking Tom and Jerry? Niggas was hitting, <laughs> niggas was hitting a real cat and shit. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about, bro? Oh, shit. Tell what he's doing by his body language. Jerry just laughs at him and pushes him back to the basement door. The owner catches him again, but this time goes ballistic. Jerry seemed like he was finally taking pity on Tom. So Jerry picks up a knife and starts stabbing the owner in the leg quite graphically. <laughs> Soon after, Tom opens Why the basement do door and they carry the body down the stairs. <laughs> Multiple so my nigga Jerry was like, damn, I'm starting to feel bad for this nigga now. <laughs> kill, kill, kill the fuck owner. Now they dragging her body in the basement. <laughs> what? That's why my nigga all bloody. <laughs> Come on, cuz. What the fuck? And I always used to trip off of this shit. Like, who the fuck is actually making this shit in the studio? Right, like, bro. Like, <laughs> you don't. They don't. They don't even have time to even do no shit. Like, animate a whole right, fucking bro. episode, bro. You, you. It's a team when you animate some shit, nigga. You can't do that shit by yourself. <laughs> the only thing that made me believe it back then was the visuals, because I was right. like, "Oh, this is actually real." <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I, I believed in some of them too, bro. Yeah, bro. But see, this this was back. Niggas didn't have niggas wanting to wear like didn't have no knowledge of shit. Now it's just like, bro, come on. Couple other bodies were then seen down there, decaying and showing signs of their violent deaths. Tom and Jerry shook Wait, hands. He said it was more bodies <laughs> down there. Couple other bodies were then seen down there. 
decaying. So that's why they couldn't go down there because it was more bodies. <laughs> The fuck? So the owner was just killing motherfuckers for no reason. Right, bro. That made no sense. <laughs> it don't make sense, bro. And showing signs of their violent deaths, Tom and Jerry shook hands. But Jerry suddenly gets an evil look in his face, and Tom says in a ghastly, deep voice, Don't you believe it? Jerry stabs Tom killing him instantly, and throws his corpse along with the other bodies. So my nigga, he's a mouse. How he picking right, up a bro. fucking... How, you how, is he throwing, how is he throwing the cat down the stairs? <laughs> right. Come on, bro. <laughs> Picked up his corpse and threw it down the stairs. <laughs> what? <laughs> he's a mouse. <laughs> he couldn't even do that in a cartoon. Bro. Right. How, how did he even attempt to stab the fucking owner? Like, what? <laughs> this nigga, this nigga Jerry is fucking just ruthless, bro. You, sh <laughs> you sure Jerry didn't kill all those motherfuckers? <laughs> 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 that nigga Jerry, a whole serial killer out here, bro. Jason Voorhees. <laughs> <laughs> Stabbing motherfuckers and shit. <laughs> Come on, man. Shot of the episode then shows Jerry putting up a for sale sign. The yard of the house. This part creeped oh, me yeah. out. Look at his face. <laughs> bro. Oh, that creeped me out when I was little. Oh, no, bro. Part of the house. <laughs> Look at this nigga, bro. <laughs> he, he off that dope. He was he, holding he, for he, sale he, sign he, looking like. He geeked up, bro. He fucked up. Yeah, he did kill them motherfuckers for sure. <laughs> yeah. I believe it now. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that nigga look evil as a motherfucker. Is that an actual clip from the cartoon? I can't tell, bro. I can't tell. That's what creeped me out. I was like, was it real? Right, bro. That nigga, that nigga does look sinister in that fucking clip. Laughing. Clearly planning to do it all over again. Here comes this next part. Max and Ruby. Zero, 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 four. Max and Ruby this, this is an animated childhood. series aimed at the, Was this the TV show with the bunny rabbits? Yeah. Yeah, I remember this shit. Oh, cool. oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. This one was messed up. This one messed me up. Each episode consists of three self-contained vignettes. Within each, Ruby is typically engaged in some sort of project or activity. While Max has a particular interest of his own, which either runs counter to Ruby or distracts her. One version was strangely different. In this video, a DVD box was found in someone's house. They actually took the time out to fucking, like... Yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> they put effort into it. <laughs> Just randomly, nigga, here. <laughs> Watch this. It was different than yeah they yeah they put yeah they was ahead of the game bro like real shit it's, like yeah shout said, out to them as far as like right shout out to them nigga as far as, far as them putting effort in making the shit scary than what right. it really is yeah because the stories themselves would be trash but if they you be, just like read them, if you just like read them by yourself you'd be like nigga what <laughs> you right bro normal Max and Ruby box art. This one had looked like it was crudely drawn in a black marker. On the back of the box, it listed four episodes, but they were not named correctly. The DVD itself was not scratched and looked in pristine condition. The episode selection screen was strangely isolated with just a white screen with black text. The titles of the episodes were called Max and Ruby 1, with the numbers being changed as it went down the list. From what the sources say, the only rememberable moment of the DVD was a disturbing static frame of Max and Ruby standing next to each other in complete darkness. They were drawn with no mouths, no noses, and their eyes were replaced with black, hollow holes. The colors were red, and there was a faint static sound in the background. That image freaking me out, bro. Yeah, this shit, this shit is creepy as fuck, bro. Yeah, bro. Yeah. That creeped me out. That shit I couldn't me, sleep. Bro. Yeah. That, yeah, bro. Yeah. more closely, 
Yeah. And then the narrator don't make it no better, bro. This nigga. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, bro. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> so this bonus episode just pop up out of nowhere. <laughs> yeah, it don't make no sense. Episode four had now been replaced with Rest in Peace, Mommy and Daddy. While the episode itself goes static at this point, it's believed that in the episode, Max and Ruby's parents murder one another. A gravestone is faintly seen with the words, Rest in Peace, Mommy and Daddy, written on it. Loud voices are heard, and the scene shows what looks like Max and Ruby hanging. It's funny, that nigga trying to, like, turn a DVD player off. What? <laughs> you wait till this... Unplug this shit or something, nigga still ain't gonna cut off, looking ass, nigga. It's too late. Right, bro. He went to the shit, bro. Right. We saw him clicking it. Oh, what's rest in peace, mommy and daddy looking ass, nigga? Now you trying to click off, nigga? Himself from the ceiling and Ruby walking in on him. In the final scene, it shows Ruby sitting near two gravestones. One with rest in peace, mommy and daddy, and another one saying rest in peace, brother. She then looks at the camera, and the screen goes to a static image of Ruby. This time with the text saying, Death is our only release. Yeah, that junk was creepy. It was, uh... Alright, let's look at this next one. Happy... I remember this one right here. This was the yeah. This one was yeah. I believe yeah. this one, bro, for some reason, bro, because the it because only, it was it was written well. That's why. Yeah, it's stupid, but it's right because like, I was actually like, was this an actual Nickelodeon show? I was googling this shit back in the day. Yeah, they put it on a the the messed up thing is they put it on Wikipedia. That's why it made me believe it. <laughs> right. <laughs> happy, happy. I'm like, I don't remember this shit. <laughs> I was asking niggas, do you remember a show Happy Like, fuck, nah, nigga. Because hey, in the story, they say it aired on Nickelodeon back then. But it only had like a right. couple episodes before, because the final episode was, yeah. nigga was murdering motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? Happy, Happy, Happy aired on Nick Jr. early in the year of 1999. The star of the show was an apple named Happy Happy, who helped children when they got injured. The first two episodes were normal and went well. In Happy's Vacation, he goes on a vacation to the beach, heals injured kids, and even talks down on a bully into not hurting a child. <laughs> the second episode, Hurt Happy, was about Happy's stick getting broken and the children teamed up to help Happy Happy by giving him bandages and fruit. But as the episodes innocent enough, you know, progressed, the show became weirder and weirder. A scene in episode four, Nate needs help. Happy aids Nate, who has a bruise on his knee. He looked at the camera, giving off an evil smile and says, what does he need for his boo-boo? He continues to stare for 30 seconds, and then broke the silence by saying, That's right, a bandage. Happy Happy was made- They was ahead of the game, bro. Like, real shit. Right. Because they're actually, put, like, they actually making that shit and doing the voices and shit. Yeah, right. bro. Put because the first one I saw, it wasn't, it wasn't none of that. Like, it was just, you know, them telling them. Made out of clay with arms, baby blue eyes, and large dark green lips being held up by a bent, rusty stick. As the show continued broadcasting on Nick Jr. every fortnight, the show became much more sinister. The rusty bent stick that was used became cleaner, and he began to develop a sinister stare with an evil grin. <laughs> By episode 7, he wasn't even made out of clay what is that? anymore. <laughs> as soon as the 8th episode aired, the show was suddenly taken off the air, along with all the recent episodes. 
every trace of Abbey Abbey was removed and not much is known about its existence. The TV show was planned to have three seasons, but they were never aired, possibly due to the sheer brutality and creepiness of the show altogether. See, that was a weird, that was a well-written one because they actually got screenshots to make it seem like it was an actual show. Right. Like, that's why, but that's why I believe that one because I was literally like, well, I ain't never heard of this shit, nigga. <laughs> couldn't find the shit. <laughs> so, and then when I couldn't find it, I was like, damn, he right. All traces of it is gone. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. They got me, bro. Right, same here.